Grey Rat the Thief was once a well-known name. Until I ended up rotting in a cell. <laughs> hey there, my name is Alex, I am the Silvermont, and this video is all about Dark Souls lore. Specifically, we'll be talking about a character who appears in Dark Souls 3. We've known quite a few thieves throughout the Souls franchise, the most famous of course being the Immutable Patches. He who quite happily erodes the barriers between universes. Unlike him, the character we'll be focusing on in this video is a little more trustworthy, and not to mention friendly. It is of course, Grey Rat, the Thief. There's not a whole lot to say about Grey Rat, the name that is. Is it his birth name or a title that he assumed? Rat could well be a derogatory term for a thief, but he seems fine with the moniker. As for Grey, the obvious and most likely case is that it's simply a form of the colour, Grey. But if we look to other languages, we can find that Grey also means simple or straightforward, along with nice and good-natured. Whilst it does apply here, who can say whether or not that's a coincidence? But that's the thing, Grey Rat is nice, isn't he? Oh, certainly he's a suspicious looking sword at first, found locked up in the high wall, and I expect most Souls veterans would at once think of Yurt and Lautrec, fellow masked individuals first encountered locked up, all three sharing a glib tongue and pleasing manner. You'd be well in your rights to treat anyone you find in Lothric with care, especially one locked up. But as it happens, Grey Rat is a pleasant enough chap. So what do we know about Grey Rat's backstory? Precious little, this is a Souls game after all, wherein characters are not like to disclose their life story to you just because you're there to listen. Indeed many have good reason to keep their past where it belongs, in the past. As for Grey Rat, we know he was a citizen of the Undead Settlement, and we can assume he was born in that rather ghastly village, but that is purely an assumption based on his nature. It seems that, whilst Patches plunders purely for his own precious profits, Grey Rat scavenges for the good of his village. Grey Rat was a thief who fancied himself a martyr for the poor, which is what drove him to climb the wall. An immediate and very obvious disparity between him and Patches then, and whilst Grey Rat has a certain relationship with Patches, we'll get to that in a moment. First let's talk about Loretta. Below the high wall is a musty little town, not the home of any lord, just a, a very old settlement of undead. An old woman, Loretta, lives there. Please, give her this ring. Upon reaching the undead settlement, we can find Loretta's bone. It seems to me that this bone is not actually Loretta's, or rather it is not from her body, judging from the description. Old, discoloured human bone with several holes bored into it. A woman's corpse in the undead settlement was found clutching this bone. Her name was Loretta. The woman's corpse? That is probably Loretta, the bone likely being a treasure of hers. Of course, it could also be a bone removed from her own body. I'm no expert on the human body, but I would assume the bone in question comes from either an arm or a leg. But... holes bored into it? The language implies a deliberate action here, someone bored holes into the bone for a reason, and I can think of a few possible explanations. First up, the holes were bored into the bone once it had been removed from the body, for the purpose of stringing it onto a necklace for example. Second, I believe that in modern medicine you will occasionally have doctors boring through bones in order to reach or avoid specific parts of the body, such as veins and tendons and the like. That seems far too complex for the level of technology present in Dark Souls, however. The last possibility I can think of would be trepanning. This was the act of boring a hole into the skull. Now, that bone certainly isn't a skull, but the reasoning could be sound. Why would you drill a hole into your head? Well, it was believed in the past that trepanning served several purposes. It could relieve pressure in the brain, that is to say, headaches. 
It could be used to treat a serious head injury. If you had been whacked on the head by a club and there was shrapnel inside your head, they might bore a hole, get the shrapnel out. Or it could allow evil spirits a means to exit the body, or welcome other spirits in to the body. Whilst only semi-related, the insight item, Madman's Knowledge in Bloodborne, also appears to be a trepanned skull, and there it is easy to explain, a hole to allow the gods in, the Great Ones. In Dark Souls, however, the best explanation I could think of would be attempting to let the undead curse exit the body by boring holes into the body, but why the leg or the arm? I don't know. That said, there could be other reasons for why Loretta is holding onto a bone with holes in it. Maybe it's just a thing she has and it doesn't really matter. What's more important is that the bone is certainly hers, and delivering it to Grey Rat initially appears to have little impact on the man, but soon her death has a pronounced effect. Did he seek to hide his feelings from us? Perhaps, but the reasoning there isn't too important. What it does reveal to us is that Grey Rat clearly had strong feelings for Loretta, that she was an important figure in his life. Was she his mother? Lover? Sister? Daughter? The game does not specify, leaving it up to you as the player to decide. Oh, forgive me, mother. Uh, forgive me, dear. We do know that she was an old woman, but come to think of it, we don't know how old Grey Rat himself is. Should you look under his mask, you will see that his model has a a rather old face, but even then it's hard to put an age to him. Personally, I am of the opinion that Loretta was Grey Rat's mother, but you are, of course, free to come to your own conclusions there. Is there any relevance to the blue tearstone ring he wishes you to give her? Very hard to know. Blue tearstones represent sorrow, whereas red represent mourning, according to Dark Souls 3, but Dark Souls 2 has a little more to offer us here. Kaitha goddess of tears, mourns those who have lost loved ones by shedding pure tears of blue. It is said that the stone set in this ring is one such tear. Even then, it's not much to go by. Could it be a gift that Loretta gave to Grey Rat? Or was it a possession of Loretta that was stolen and found its way onto the high wall and Grey Rat returned it to her? Well, who knows, but it is a fitting ring, considering poor Grey Rat and Loretta, and their ultimate fate. Yet, once the man has had enough time to grieve, lost Loretta, he determines to scavenge for the player, to venture on increasingly dangerous trips. The first, to the High Wall of Lothric, of which his success is certain. His second sees him off to the Boreal Valley, and it's possible that Grey Rat can meet his end here, trapped in the sewers by unsightly creatures. Salvation can be his, however, if we send an Onion Knight to the rescue. It is possible for Siegvert of Katarina to save Grey Rat, if he makes it to Irithel as well. Likewise, Patches can save Grey Rat, if he retains the Onion Armor. As for why he refuses to save Grey Rat without the armor, could it be that he was reluctant to let Grey Rat see his face, or did he simply not feel safe without the armor? The former would make more sense as, well, it's patches. When has a lack of armor ever stopped him? As for the third visit, Grey Rat will head out to Lothric Castle proper, a suicide mission resulting in certain, unavoidable death. It seems that Grey Rat has a very good idea of what will happen should he brave the castle, yet he welcomes the challenge. I'm aware of the danger. That castle is a death trap. Not a single man has returned from the castle unscathed, even back in the day. But I don't want to sit around and die a petty rat, and I consider myself your friend. I lived a petty rat, but would rather not die as one. Better to live a coward, or die a brave man? Or to put it another way, better to live a rat, or die a man? It would appear Grey Rat thought a heroic end would suit him in some manner. Was this inspired by his interactions with us as a player? Perhaps. There is little obvious development there, but you have to consider the effect the Ashen One would have on other characters. You are a hero, if a somewhat unconventional one. 
You succeed through impossible odds facing death again and again. It seems fair that many would be touched by your efforts, whether they say so or not. Anri of Astora, for example, makes it plain the player's inspiration to them. And speaking of Anri, there is cut dialogue wherein Grey Rat remarks on Anri saving him, such as the Onion Knight can. Was that just a placeholder for the Boreal Valley? Or was Anri at one point supposed to save Grey Rat in Lothric Castle? Impossible to say for certain. And speaking of Onion Knights, Ziegmeier of Katarina in the very first game. Now there's a character that was heavily inspired, and you might even argue emasculated by the Chosen Undead, saved and aided by the Chosen Undead again and again, impacting the proud knights. Well, pride. How about Grey Rat's relationship with old Patches then? Well, Patches definitely seems to think of Grey Rat as his elder, and remarks that he did him a good turn in Lothric Dungeon. Did he help Patches escape? That would seem likely, considering Lothric doesn't seem the type of place to let prisoners out on good behaviour, and it's Patches, when has he ever been well behaved? Patches also seems distraught on Grey Rat's death, and is apparently the first ever character that Patches has cared about besides himself, unless we count Amygdala, that is. On the other hand, Grey Rat barely mentions Patches. Does he ever mention Patches? I don't believe he does. Is that because he finds Patches unsavoury? Or purely because there's nothing for him to say? From a gameplay perspective, maybe he doesn't even know Patches is there. Maybe Patches hides from him in Firelink Shrine. Who can say? Either way, Grey Rat's story is a rather sad one. But then, that is typical for Dark Souls, no? A man who perhaps grew up in the Undead Settlement, considering himself a martyr by pilfering and pillaging trinkets for his village, only to spend who knows how long locked up in jail, and when he sprung, he night immediately discovers the death of a loved one, and is soon met by death himself. Of course, the alternatives are to leave him in jail permanently, or to free him, but leave him in Firelink Shrine, safe, perfectly safe. But in the end, a safe rat, and no man. Ah, oh, cold piss. Why did it come to this? And I thought we were friends. <laughs> Some friends. <laughs>